Hi, welcome. Um, we're going to talk today about the fifth lecture. This is the first part of it. Probabilistic models for discriminative classification. So, if you remember, we discussed already like we have two different types of methods. We have the generative ones that work basically using a predictive function such that they use the likelihood of the data given the the data that, that we are found in like the class times the prior hence there are generative methods because they rely on this generation over here and we have the discriminative ones and these discriminative methods they just are a simple function from our input right so in that sense they are simpler and today we will be focusing on this particular part how the discriminative methods work and how they uh, how can we use them so our main focus will be on logistic regression these days so logistic regression is uh, um, one of the most useful ones and as you remember, we already discussed how we can approximate this um, uh, given a class and given, sorry, the given the data, how can we approximate the class and, and using the, the different parameters that we have. So if you remember like this is a Bernoulli distribution and this Bernoulli distribution of Y with respect of X and W, it is uh, defined as um, uh, based on a sigmoid, right? That's that's why it is called logistic. So since we're going to use it um, from all the data here, we're going to have the multiplication from i equal to one up to n of the sigmoid of the parameter transpose given x. So this is weighting the 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 features in x, right? And we have the indicator function when this actually is the uh, like our interesting class, okay, we can just call it one, sorry. And the negative of that particular distribution when we have the other class, the yi equals zero. And this um, this form uh, is the, 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 the common form from the distribution, but we're actually interested more in the, in the logarithm of this. So we are going to just take the log of this distribution here as you remember, like we just take the py of x and w, and by taking this, this multiplication becomes a summation, and the summation of i equal one up to n of the log of this thing over here. So the log makes this uh, get down, and this is just the the label that we have, right? So I can just replace that uh, indicator function with my data, and this will be the log of the sigmoid over here. Uh, WTXI and uh, sorry this should be XI's right and in here we just add these because they were multiplying so this is 1 minus YI because this is the other class right uh, times the log of whatever it was inside so 1 minus uh, sigma of XI and you will see that uh, in the following we use uh, a handy transformation so instead of talking about this uh, wtxi we will just call about mu i and we will just talk about the the representation of the of the sigmoid so we are just taking the logarithm of some particular value or some particular response so it will make it much much simpler and you will see in the book that there is another representation basically uh, when you take instead of taking the one and, and zero class you can use the minus one and one representation but it just it, it, it makes it simpler but in our case it doesn't make uh, much of a difference because we are just focusing on the on the representation of of what they were nulli here so they, they use it for instance in SBMs or some other type of, of discriminative based classification right so as you can see here, it is really hard to, to try to solve this and you won't find a closed form to, to find the gradient with respect of W and then making that equal to zero and then solving for that. So instead what we will do is like, we will just try to get and study some gradient based representation 
So our objective is to find the gradient of this particular uh, thing and then use that gradient in a, in a way uh, through gradient descent or some, some, some other uh, version of it, okay? So how do you compute the gradient of this? So basically, uh, we're just interested if, if I call this, uh, let's say like I will just call it L of W. So I'm, I'm interested in, in taking the, the derivative of L of W with respect of W, okay? And this L of W actually, if you see, it depends on this mu i that I was talking about. So we can uh, simplify this uh, computation and then just do the chain rule over here. So this is basically the L of W um, with respect of mu i. And then this is the derivative of mu i with respect of W. Right. So how is the derivative of this with respect of mu i? So basically, I just get the uh, y i over mu i times the derivative of this thing over here. Right. So I would get the derivative of mu i with respect of w i. So I will just oh, sorry w. So I will just tell you in a bit what what this is. Okay. And now we just do the same thing for the second term. So we have the one minus y i over this thing over here is also mu i, right? So I'm just going to do one minus mu i here times the d mu i over uh, dw. So now it would be interesting to actually understand what this uh, this form looks like, right? Like what this d mu i is. So mu i basically it is just simply a, a logistic function, logistic function from a. Right. In this case, a is the wtxi, and if you remember, like this is the definition of one plus e up to i. So now I want to compute this derivative. What is the derivative of this with respect of a? Right, of, of this sigma a. And it is just a matter of, of doing the derivative. So this you can think of it as one plus e minus a up to minus one. Right. So basically, I just take this sign down, and we just do a normal derivative here. This is going to be a square, and then you need to do the derivative of the thing inside. So this will be minus e a. Okay. And basically, uh, we just multiply this stuff in here, and you get like uh, e minus a up to one plus e minus a square. And now we have uh, the derivative, but this is not that handy, so we want to put it back in terms of of this logistic form. And there's just a right trick here. So I'm just going to split this part for no reason, just because it is the sigmoid. So I have one sigmoid inside. And then I have a second one in here in the shape of this thing over here. And if I do the, um, the division over here, you will see that this ends up as a positive one. So this is actually the negative of one minus these values, so it is one plus e up to a. Know that this ends up as positive, right? Because I do the division over here and this is just the inverse. So it ends up as a positive one. And this is equivalent of just um, dividing one minus the sigma, right? So this ends up as sigma a times one minus sigma a, basically, right? And then if I do the chain rule, then I will need to multiply by the dA over here, which is uh, uh, the WTXI. So by applying that, I end up with some yi over mu i. Okay, and then I just plug this in here. So I, I end up with the, uh, okay, sorry. Like if you just wanted, this is mu i, one minus mu i, right? So I can just plug it back. The mu i times one minus mu i. And then I need just to do the derivative of wt xi, which is just xi. And plus the second term is going to take the same shape, uh, yi over 1 minus mu i times mu i, 1 minus mu i, uh, xi, right? And then I just cancel stuff in here. I just cancel this. And then I, I can just simply expand this, this form. And I will have like, this is the yi. Uh, xi minus yi mu i xi plus mu i xi minus uh, yi 
ui xi right yeah and then uh wait what oh sorry i'm missing here the derivative of this thing right because i am i need to do this derivative of the logarithm so this is the one minus mu i but then I need to com continue the chain, right? So I'm, I'm missing the derivative of this one minus mu i, so this should be um, minus one in here. So this is actually negative. So all these things is multiplied by minus one. So these signs should be swapped. This should be minus here and this should be plus. Okay, so now I can cancel these two things out and we end up with the y i minus mu i x i, right? And if you want to put this in a, um, in a matrix form, because this WI is with respect of each of those uh, values, right? So I am actually having this summation over here. So I also forget that. I'm sorry, uh, forgive me. So there is some W uh, summation over here, right? Uh, let me just put it for completeness. Uh, sorry for the messiness. Hopefully this will get better with time. And so I end up with some summation over here too. And yeah, so now this can, can be in a matrix form because this is just the X transpose times this Y minus mu, okay? If you go to the Morphe book, you will see that these signs are swapped because I just do the likely, the log likelihood of the, of the distribution, right? But I think the, uh, he does it with respect of the negative log likelihood, so you have the negative one. Basically just minimizing instead of maximizing, so. Uh, it is the same the same idea at the end and this is our gradient so this is g of w right so this is what we call g of w and now i can do the same thing for the for the hessian for the second derivative of my of my uh, of my function here so the hessian is if you remember like um it is defined as the derivative of the of the function with respect of twice the derivative of uh, of the parameter over here. So we already have the gradient. So we already have one of those derivatives. So I can just push the transpose and, and I will have these, this particular shape. So now I want to compute that with respect of this one, right? So this is a simple matter of just pushing the, the, the definition over here. And I want to compute then the derivative with respect of W of this thing over here of X, T, Y minus mu I, okay? Um, and yeah, so I need to, oh, sorry, uh, the transpose of this thing, right? So I need to transpose this. And this is equivalent then to just do the derivative with respect of this part after transposing because uh, y is, is constant with respect of w, right? So I just have the derivative of mu. Um, and yeah, so what is this? This is the transpose then of y minus mu transpose x. And then I need to do the derivative of this. So this is equal to, and we already know what the derivative of mu is, right? So this part here is an scalar, so it, it won't change. But my other part, the, the derivative with respect to W T X I, that X I is a vector, right? So that will be affected by this particular shape over here. So if I want to maintain it, I will need to multiply it by the other side and transpose it. So um, basically this is just the uh, X transpose mu one minus mu x right so just pushing this derivative over here so you see it's, it's the same thing that we have here remember like this is a, this is a scalar right and this is just the vector so if i want to maintain this multiplication this should be a, a diagonal matrix so this over here should be a, an an s matrix that is a diagonal with respect of the of each of those um mu i and y minus mu i values right and this is our Hessian. So if you remember like this should be positive semi-definite, that, that means like the uh, multiplying this particular H by both sides with, uh, with the X's should yield some uh, positive number regardless of what X is in our N. So for the next part, we will continue with some methods for optimization, okay?